Hi again everyone, this is Adrian Hughes here with another look at the Alcatel POP4. So today we're looking at the benchmarks for those of you curious out there. So this is running a 1.1 GHz Snapdragon 8 210, sorry, with 1 GB of RAM and 8 GB of internal storage. So let's just have a quick look at AM22 first. So I've already run these benchmarks, so I'll just display, there it is there, the score. So nearly 17,000 on AM22, which um, if you know, the Snapdragon 400 scores one and a half to two times more than this device here. So as you can see, there's a comparison there with all the other devices. So the current um, flagships are running at 140, 160, 120 uh, Snapdragon 810 devices, probably down the list here around that. Uh, let's see. Nexus 6, it's uh, 805, so close. Uh, about the 80, 90 mark. Same with the iPhone 6 and iPod 6 generation touch. So. As you can see here, the Xiaomi Mi Max, which is running a Snapdragon 650, is running around the uh, 74,000 mark there, along with the Redmi Note, which runs a similar processor. So that's just a quick comparison on the AM22 mark there. So not very high. Uh, also for comparison, the Asus Zenfone 2 scores about 55,000. And uh, Snapdragon 600 devices like the LG G8.3 that I have, uh, runs about the uh, in the 40s, late 40s, 47. So, as you can see, running at least it's running a um, close to stock version of Android Marshmallow because if they had their own launcher, um, which they do, but if they had more customizations, then probably slow it down a bit more. So, next we'll take a look at the Geekbench 3 scores. So, again, running 1.1 gigahertz Snapdragon 210, 1 gigabyte RAM and the Adreno 304 GPU. So we should have the benchmark scores, but it appears it didn't save it, so we'll just run it again, which won't take long on Geekbench 3, hopefully. So yeah, what else have I noticed with this device? Uh, in the meantime, let's just talk about that while we're waiting for the Geekbench to run. Um, yeah, it has been a bit stuttery. Uh, like I said yesterday, the notification panel does take a bit of time to drop down, so um, I'm not sure if that's what uh, Alcatel has purposely designed because uh, I've seen on reviews of the Alcatel Idol 4S that the same has happened there. Um, yeah, apart from that, it's not... It's not uh, too bad actually. Everything is running as designed. I've noticed that if you have more than probably four or five apps then it will start to almost uh, freeze on you. It just wants to clear some of the apps from the memory. Um, so it's not super great for multitasking. I've yet to test gaming so I'll let you guys know what the result of that is. So we're always at 60% mark here. And then after this, we're going to run the um, Android bench benchmarks to see the storage speeds, speeds of the device in reading and writing to its internal memory. Obviously, not going to test the micro SD card read, read and write speeds, as uh, obviously that's determined on a lot of factors and doesn't really come into play when we're talking about the actual device itself. So we'll take a quick look at the lock screen settings, which I didn't show in my last video. So we're almost done with this Geekbench 3 benchmark here at the 90% mark. Wait for And this does have a uh, BGN wireless AC. 
So there we go, there are the Geekbench free results. So a single call score of 292 and a multi call score of 973. So this is pretty much on the anemic side of things here. Um, for comparison, my Zenfone free runs at single call 700 and multi call score of about 14 or 1500. So as you can see, there's comparisons with some devices. Uh, are a bit old so I'm not sure what they do that but um, as you can see down there we're going right down to the bottom of the list so it runs even a bit slower than the Snapdragon 400 of the original Motorola Moto G generation which came out in 2013 and even a little bit worse than the uh, original Zeus Nexus 7 2012 so that's to be expected because it is running a Snapdragon 210. Next we'll take a look at the Andrew Bench scores here. So the 200, uh, the Snapdragon 200 and Snapdragon 210 were pretty anemic. Uh, the only one that's kind of ramped up to say even compete with the uh, Snapdragon 400 is the Snapdragon 212. But we haven't seen much devices there as of yet. So let's just take a look at the results here running uh, Android Bench 4 running a read write of 256k segments so we have sequential read of 86.61 megabytes per second and a write of 27.32 which does put it on the very low side again closer to Moto G 2013 scores the original generation uh, must be noted that Motorola has their own F2F file system which does improve performance there so that would have ramped it up even more in comparison. So the last benchmark we'll have a look at is a GFX bench. I've already run this benchmark so hopefully fingers crossed there will be the results here. So this will give us an idea of how it runs uh, in terms of graphics, say playing games and uh, frame rates. So let's just see the results there. So as you can see there we're running at 5.7 frames per second, 2.7 frames per second for 1080p off screen, uh, driver 3.3 frames per second. So that's very 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 low. Um, just casual, very casual gaming. I wouldn't suggest anything more than that. Um, also, as you can see in comparison, see, look at the uh, total frames there, uh, 170 and 160 range. So we'll compare that in comparison to, you know, the iPhone SE uh, 6S, it's 3000, in the thousands and thousands and thousands. So we'll just see if we have anything that comes close. So we'll be scrolling down this list for a while. So just give us a second here. 600, So this will give us an idea of what uh, it compares to in terms of device and obviously the device age generation or not. So we are still struggling down the list here. What a comprehensive list of devices here on there marking comparison so we're in the 200s now so a very 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 um, poor performance but that's to be expected um, it doesn't detract from the device itself as you can see it does it does lag here and there we are fortunate that it is running almost near standard Android marshmallow as I've said there been even more bloatware or uh, customizations on top then we would have been in quite a bit of trouble. So we are just looking at some devices here. There's some obviously some from the Chinese manufacturers and vendors. Uh, let's see. Uh, anyone recognize? Oh, there we go. Galaxy Tab 4 7.0. It runs about the same. I'm not sure that might even have a MediaTek processor from 
needs to go. And as you tab 10.1, see that device is already a few years old. Um, tab 3, that's running a MediaTek processor. Oh geez, even the Huawei SNG 630. So I think that's running Huawei's own silicon from a couple of years back. And then we have a lot of uh, also Indian manufacturers here. So as you can see, uh, very, very low, and not even some Western names here to compare to, apart from the, or the Samsung Galaxy tablet there. So, that's going to do it for this video. I'd like to thank you again for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and uh, I'll give you an idea of what this device runs at, performs at, or not. I know benchmarks aren't everything, but it does give you a general idea of how this device stacks up to the competition and how it performs in general. So thank you again for watching, have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one.